من فضلكم كل الأطفال من سن ثلاث سنين لغاية الحضانة ينزلوا في المسرح اللي في القاعة في الكنيسة تحت اللي من سنة أولى لسنة ثالثة يروحوا أوضة الفلوشيب روم إنما اللي في إعدادي وثانوي المفروض يحضروا الوعظة In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and for all ages of all ages, Amen. Please, please, while you are leaving, you don't have to talk. Those in the foyer that are making very loud noise, that's not right. The journey of the Lent leads us to prepare for this week. The, the entire 40 days plus the preparation week was something that we should go, grow from, something that kind of builds us up and leads us up to where we are this week. Um, also, the first three days of Holy Week, of the Holy Bascha, lead us to tonight. All the stories that we've heard, the prophecies that we've read, the gospels that we've read, the parables that we've heard, all prepare us for today. So we'll do a quick review of the last three days and see where it ties in. The major themes we had were about basically a marriage in which symbolizes our relationship with our Lord himself. We read about the oil, which represented the good works. We read about the virginity, which is all of us who remain pure. We've read about Christ and the bridegroom, which are all who are wise should be prepared to meet him. And we've read about preparing and bearing fruits worthy of repentance. All those help lead us to what we see that happens today. Um, we'll go through some of the readings and then tie everything in together. So we read in the morning today about the Israelites and leaving Egypt and what happened after that. They saw the salvation of the Lord. The Lord led them out of Egypt and he led them with a mighty arm. He led them, they seen the plagues that the pharaohs and the uh, Egyptians endured. They've seen the signs and wonders and miracles. And as they were leaving, they also saw the angel of the Lord giving a smoke and pillar of fire leading them. And they also saw Pharaoh's army drowned in the sea. What happens after that, after all those signs and wonders and miracles? They complain. What do they complain about? They don't have water. God gives them water. They don't have figs. They don't have vines. They don't have fruits. After all the miracles and signs, the first thing they do is complain. We learn from that that we must seek the Lord and his righteousness or we'll become desolate and wander aimlessly. We learn also from the readings that we need to keep our heart pure and our mouth pure and keep our eyes on eternity. The readings are there for a reason. We say, what's the point of the readings? What's the point of this week? Why are we going through what the Israelites did? Well, the whole theme comes down to the heart. And we'll see that really the stories are there not because they did them and just for us to learn from them, but they apply to us. That applies to many of us. We see the blessings of the Lord. We live the life with the Lord. We are called by his name as Christians, and if you will, we wind up doing the same thing that we say, how can they do this? So let's explore a little bit further. The <clears throat> morning readings also take us through stages of spiritual life. We find those who seek the Lord and find fruit and find satisfaction in the Lord. Then we see in the third hour the evil man who depends on his own strength, his own virtue and his own efforts, his own agenda. The Lord might be there, he might be with him, but he puts it aside and follows his own agenda. 
we get to the sixth and ninth hour and learn that to obtain the fruit, we must first go to Bethany and pour our hearts out to the Lord at the feet of the Lord with precious oil, which is our good works. Then finally, in Jerusalem, we see the prayer of submission, which is to go carrying our cross with the Lord. <clears throat> so all the readings from when we started Sunday to today, we have the oil, the virginity, the fruits, the bridegroom, wisdom, and being prepared. Unconditional love with our eyes on eternity. All of those readings lead us to tonight. Tonight kind of... The, the Holy Bascha picks it up a level. It's elevated a level. We went through some of the, I don't want to say less important details, but now we're kind of stepping it up to the next level. So what is the message that we take from that? I'll summarize it for you, make it real simple. We don't have to go over the past three days, but be wise and prepare, be ready, and bear fruits worthy of repentance and enjoy the reward. Through wisdom and all these fruits that we mentioned, we'll find our treasure with the Lord. Don't value what you spend on the Lord. Do whatever it takes to know the Lord. And as we heard yesterday, put on the garment to be with the Lord. Of course, that garment is to become like Christ. That garment is Christ himself. Put on Christ and have unconditional love. The readings we had this evening, we read in the first prophecy of Ezekiel about the middle wall that was put up to stop harlotry and abominations. Where else do we hear about the wall? We hear about it in the liturgy. When Abuna prays the Gregorian liturgy, the middle wall, what did Christ do with it? He took down the middle wall. He took away that separation that separation that divided us from him, it wasn't there before, it came about because of sin. And not just any sins, the Lord refers, or the prophecy Ezekiel refers to them as harlotry and abominations. Very, very severe sins that put up this wall. Um, of course, after the resurrection in the liturgy tomorrow, we don't pray the reconciliation prayer, but as we see on the resurrection, we pray that and Christ has taken down that wall. We also see how it says Christ explains how he willingly laid down his life for us all. The crucifixion is not by force, but out of love. By his own power. He says, no one takes it from me. I lay down my life that I may take it again. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. No one else has that power. Even if we think someone can lay down their life through taking of a life or something like that, they don't have power to take it again. He's the only one who has power to lay down the life and take it again. And then we read also in Amos that when he has blessed his people, they have ignored him, and then the big main event is, is Mary anointing Christ at Bethany. Um, we read people are unable to fully accept Christ and harden their hearts because the love, they love the praise of men more than God and feared exclusion. There were some Pharisees who followed, wanted to follow Christ, but they were worried. They were worried about not getting praise from men and being excluded. That reminds me of sometimes what we want to do nowadays. We want to be politically correct. We want to be careful not to offend anyone. We want to be careful to join the in-group and be the in-crowd. But at what expense? Are we laying aside the Lord? Are we, in a sense, denying and betraying the Lord? There is warning against sin, laziness, and stubbornness. We see the contrast between the, the stubbornness and the... Pharisees that wanted to take up stones and stone Christ and the patience of the wise Savior. And then finally we read in the final gospel about the light of Christ. The light that separates darkness from light. Wisdom from confusion. This light or coming close to him is the only way 
we can repent and return to the light. Otherwise, Jeremiah says we're in perpetual backsliding. Perpetual backsliding is, means we just keep getting dig, deeper and deeper away from Christ. Huh? We have to come to Christ, come to that light, to know what condition our heart is in. Is it soft? Is it hard? Is it stony? And just going over a summary of the events, we see Judas plots to betray Jesus, contrasted with the great love that Mary had. Mary's heart overflowed with love and gave from her heart without calculation, without price. Judas' heart overflowed with evil. And even on top of it, he saw evil in Mary's actions themselves. Over the whole Lent, we see the theme of the heart. We have the sacrificial heart, which is the heart of the Lord sacrificing himself. We have the loving heart, that of Mary. We have the hard heart like Judas the stony heart, like the Israelites, and the renewed heart, which is hopefully us. <clears throat> we have kisses of extreme love versus kiss of betrayal. When we co contrast to get to them together, we see what were the kisses of love composed of. They were composed of all the things we had over the past three days. The good works, purity, wisdom, bearing fruit, finding fruit, and being satisfied and filled with the Lord. When we contrast that with the kiss of Judas, the kiss of betrayal, what was it full of? Was adulterous, unworthy, unfaithful, foolish, no fruit, wanted its own agenda, own efforts, its own strength, and hypocritical as we read in the theme of the, uh, the fig tree that bore no fruit. So the question is, what kind of kisses do we offer to the Lord? The kisses of love or the kisses of betrayal? So let's just look at Judas for a second here. Judas probably saw all the miracles Jesus performed. He was in the boat when Jesus calmed the storm. He saw Jesus turn water into wine. He helped pick up the leftovers from the feeding of the 5,000. Um, the fathers write that the 12 baskets remaining, each of the disciples carried one of those baskets on them, which was probably heavy and weighed down for them to contemplate in, on the awesomeness of the miracle. Um, he was there when Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He heard the parables and the sermons. He heard it all. He saw it all. He walked with Christ every day. He was one of Jesus' hand-picked men. He knew the Son of God personally. What happened? What happened to him is the same thing that can happen to each and every one of us. The story is there to illustrate that each of us can have part of Judas in us. I know no one wants to hear that. Everyone wants to hear that they're more like Mary. But some of us have, or all of us, has a little bit of Judas within us. Huh? What he did, we could do regularly. If we think otherwise, we've kind of missed the point of the story. He's a lot like us, and we're a lot like him. In fact, the more religious we are, the more we have to be on guard. St. Paul tells us what? I must watch myself, lest after I've bought all these others to Christ, I myself might lose the prize. So the closer we are to God, that's each and every one of us sitting in this church tonight, the more we have to be careful, the more we have to be on guard. After all, you can't get much more religious than one of the 12 apostles. We see the extreme love of Mary, as we mentioned, and how she sacrificed nothing for Jesus. It's said that the, the spikenard oil that she used was probably enough to feed a family for a year versus what the 30 coins of silver Judas got was probably something to last maybe between a week to a month, depending on the source you check. So a week to a month's wages versus a year's wages. <clears throat> she also didn't allow the servant to wash the feet of Christ, but personally anoints him out of love and humility. The act that she did, Christ himself teaches the disciples, as we'll see tomorrow. She washes his feet and kisses his feet. She dries his feet with her hair, which is the crown and glory of any woman. 
So Judas and Mary both followed the Lord, both witnessed the miracles and signs and wonders, both saw Lazarus being raised from the dead. So let's look at Judas and us for a little bit. We've heard it all. Is there anyone here who hasn't heard so many stories in the Bible or experienced Christ in the liturgy or has personally had miracles happen to them? We've heard it all. We've seen it all. We walk with Christ every Sunday and most of Holy Week. We are one of Jesus' hand-picked people, every one of us. We know the Son of God, and we partake of him almost weekly and sometimes more than weekly. So what's the problem? The problem is our hearts. The problem is, Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But we have a solution. The solution is, we read in Ezekiel, and I will give you a new heart, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. That's the summary of tonight. As we bring our oil, our gifts, our repentance, our being joined to Christ, as we put on Christ and build that relationship with him, as we come closer to the light of Christ, our hard heart gets exposed. We know it is. Huh? But when we come to Christ, he takes it away and puts in that heart of flesh that we're able to love with again. The one where we're not so skeptical of everyone and so critical of everyone and so bothered by everyone. We become as a little child with that fresh heart that loves everyone. Hearts dedicated to work, wealth, status, and comfort, the cares of this world are quick to find excuses and justifications. Oh, I did this because. There's always a reason. When we lose the wonder of his amazing love for us, we fail to see the scars in his hands and feet and the crown of thorns on his head. We may all love Christ, but don't want to be the hands and feet of Christ that do his work. We don't want to be bothered. So really we can't avoid falling. We can't avoid falling into the sin, but let's look at what some of the fathers write. St. John Chrysostom says, Let us rise again, brethren, however late we seem to be. Let us stand and stand with prestige. To fall is not that serious. What is more serious is to stay down after without rising again, to be coward and slothful, to remain helpless with despair. Let us learn how to walk in virtue and avoid evil and controversial things. And again, St. Basil tells us, have you sinned? Rise up. Have you sinned? Stop sinning. Do not stand in the path of sinners. And Tertullian tells us, Heaven and the angels rejoice for the repentance of one man. Rejoice, O sinner. Rejoice, O sinner. All of this was done because we have weak hearts. We have these evil hearts. We sin. But rejoice as long as we come back with re repentance. Huh? Focus on anointing the Lord. Don't focus on the sins and betrayal leading to the nails, but rather focus on seeing Christ opening the doors of paradise. Anoint the Lord's head with faith and hope and love. Um, we anoint our Lord's feet when we renew his poor by giving a kind word of consolation. We wipe the feet of those of the poor when we share what we have in excess to alleviate the wants of the needy. That's from Be the Venerable. Judas and Peter both fell. One betrayed Jesus, one denied Jesus. If you ask me, the words are almost identical, but what's the difference? Huh? Our Lord had mercy waiting for both of them. Peter repented, weeping for his sin, begging for pardon, pardon, and Christ confirmed him in faith and love. He returned to the Lord. Judas, however, failed to trust in Christ's mercy. The path to repentance was open to him until the last minute, but when he thought he had gone too far to come back to the feet of the Lord, then it was over for him. It is never, ever too late to come back to the Lord. Never. He wants to make sure that you know that. Return to the Lord, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
He says, I have come to call, that's wrong there, I wrote that wrong. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked may turn from his evil way and live. Turn from your evil ways. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will be as wool. And St. John Chrysostom again tells us, Why do you adorn your body while your soul is neglected, possessed by uncleanness? Why don't you care as much about your souls as you do for your body? What madness is this? Shift your adorning within. Put these necklaces about your soul. And glory be to God forever. Amen. اللي قالوا راي لكن وي وانت عايزين نرجع كده لورا من يوم الاربعاء ونبص على خطه المسيح من الحد للحد من حد الزعف لحد القيامه خطه الخلاص عشان نتامل فيها عايز اجيب حبه خلفيات اول واحده وعد المسيح لبطرس لما قال له على هذه الصخرة أبني كنيستي وأبواب الجحيم لن تقوى عليها شقين يبني الكنيسة وأبواب الجحيم هتنفتح اللقطة الثانية من ملوك الثاني لما أليشع خد أمر من ربنا بأنه يمسح ياهو ابن يهوشفاط ملك على إسرائيل عمل إيه؟ إدى قرورة الده لواحد من الأنبياء الصغيرين وراح وقال له روح قابل ياهو وادخل بيه أوضة لوحديكو وصب على راسه الده وقول له رب الرب مسحك اله ملك على اسرائيل. راح النبي وقابل ياهو كان في ساحه كبيره وطلب مقابلته مقابله خاصه ودخل الاوضه حط الدهن على راسه وقال له ربنا مسحك ملك على اسرائيل وخرج وجري. خرج ياهو ملخبط شويه فالناس قالوا له ايه قال لك ايه قال لهم ولا حاجه قالوا لا قول فقال لهم الرب قال انه يمسحني ملك على اسرائيل فاعوانه كلهم هو كان واقف فوق اعوانه كلهم قلعوا هدومهم العبايات وفرشوها على السلم اللي هينزل عليه قلع الملابس دية وفرشها تحت ارجل الملك الجديد هو مبايعة الملك الجديد وإعلان الخضوع للملك أظن واضحة إحنا عايزين نوصل لإيه ناخد نقطة تانية مثل السيد المسيح قاله على الكرمين الأرضياء اتكلم عن إزاي إن هم أهانوا أنبياءه وقراره الأخير بعزل الكرامين الأرضياء وإنه هيجيب كرامين جداد يدوله الثمر في أوقاتها الكنيسة الجديدة وطبعا في نقطة تانية السيد المسيح قالها قال ما تقدر عشان تقدر تنهب أمتعة القوي لازم اللي أقوى منه يربطه وبعدين يقدر يفتح بيته وينهب أمتعته كل دي نقط عايزين نربط بينها بعد شوية 
على هذه الصخرة أبني كنيستي إزاي المسيح بنى الكنيسة بتاعته طوبة طوبة يعني لكن هي تلميذ تلميذ لأن أنا مهندس بحب أبص على الأرقام فخلينا نبص شوية على الأرقام بتاعة عدد التلاميذ لو نروح في أصحاح في في أصحاح ستة من إنجيل لوقا السيد المسيح مضى على الجبل الليل كله بيصلي وبعدين نزل دعا تلاميذه واختار منهم 12 فاذا هو كان عنده أكثر من 12 كان عنده مثلا 25 30 واختار منهم 12 ثلاثة منهم كان مميزهم وطلعوا معاه على جبل التجلي وشافوا الملكوت في يوحنا ستة بعد ما السيد المسيح عين ال12 رسول بعتهم في إرسالية الرسل الإرسالية الأولى الإرسالية دي تمرين للرسل بتوعه إزاي إن هم يستعملوا السلطان بتاعه لأنه أعطاهم سلطان في نشر الدعوة والشهادة للمسيح لما رجعوا الـ 12 رسول وبعديها عمل معجزة الخمس تلاف والإشباع الخمس تلاف ابتدى السيد المسيح يتكلم عن المرحلة بقى الجديدة الجد كان ساعتها يوحنا اتقطعت رقبته ابتدى السيد المسيح يتكلم عن اكل جسده وشرب دمه جزء كبير من تلاميذه ما قدروش قالوا ازاي الراجل ده هيدينا جسده ناكله ويوحنا يقول لنا في اصحاح سته انه رجع كثير من تلاميذه الى الوراء وهو التفت لل12 وقال لهم وانتوا كمان عايزين تمشوا وطبعا بطرس بلسانه الحلو قال ايه يا رب الى من نذهب وكلام الحياه الابديه عندك بطرس كان بيقول له انا ما عنديش فكره هاكل جسدك ازاي ولا اشرب دمك ازاي لكن انا معاك انا وياك للابديه فال25 30 بقوا 12 تاني ده في اصحاح 6 في لوقا نمشي شوية لأصحاح تسعة في لوقا ونلاقي في عدد واحد وخمسين عبارة كده صغيرة حلوة أوي وحين تمت الأيام لارتفاعه ارتفاعه ثبت وجهه لينطلق إلى أورشليم عند النقطة دي كان فاتت حوالي ثلاث سنين من خدمة السيد وإحنا دلوقتي في الرحلة الأخيرة اللي رايح فيها لأورشليم تمهيدا لارتفاعه. قبليها بشويه لما خد بطرس ويوحنا ويعقوب وصعد على الجبل يقول ايه؟ إذا رجلان يتكلمان معه وهما موسى وهما موسى وإيليا اللذان ظهرا بمجد وتكلما عن خروجه. ففي ارتفاعه وخروجه. الذي كان عتيدا ان يكمله في اورشليم. نمشي شويه ثلاث اعداد في لوقا عشرة عدد واحد. احنا لسه ماشيين رايحين لاورشليم. بعد ذلك عين الرب سبعين اخرين وارسلهم اثنين اثنين امام وجهه الى كل مدينه وموضع حيث كان مزمعا ان ياتي. هو رايح اورشليم. وبعت قدامه سبعين اتنين اتنين يعني خمسة وتلاتين فريق في وقت واحد في خمسة وتلاتين قرية بيسمعوا باسم يسوع المسيح اخرج باسم يسوع قم باسم يسوع المسيح لك اقول اطهر وكانت حتى الشياطين تخضع لنا باسمك السبعين دولة خدوا شحنة من سلطان السيد زيهم زي ال 12 طيب وصلنا لابواب اورشليم و 
السيد المسيح بعت اتنين من رسله عايز اقول انهم بطرس ويوحنا لكن ما فيش حاجه اتسجلت باسمائهم لكن بعت اتنين من الرسل وقال لهم جيبوا في جحش حلوه ولما يقولوا لكم بتحلوه ليه؟ ربنا عايزه فهيديه لكم وراحوا وفعلا حلوا الجحش واصحابه قالوا له بتحلوهم ليه؟ ربنا عايزه فقاموا تركوهم طبعا فيه قوة الروح القدس اللي حركت الرد ده لأن أي واحد عنده حمار ويجي له ناس بيحلوه ويقول له ويقولوا له ربنا عايزه يوم يقول لهم طب اتفضلوا لكن روح القدس بيتحكم في كل المواقف فهم جايين بقى بطرس ويوحنا مثلا ال 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 القوة دي محركاها فأول ما وصلوا للسيد المسيح عملوا إيه؟ خلعوا هدومهم وحطوها على الجحش وفرشوا قمصان ده علامة الخضوع للملك الجديد فهنا السيد المسيح لما دخل وكانت الشرارة بتاعة الرسولين دول إن هم قلعوا هدومهم ولعت بقى في كل الرسل وكل التلاميذ احنا قلنا كانوا كام؟ 12 و70 يبقى في 82 لكن الرحله كان لسه برضو المسيح عمال بيدعو تلاميذ جديده فتفتكروا كان فيه كام في الفتره دي اللي هو دخل فيها المسيح اورشليم انا عايز اقول 120 جبتها منين؟ اعمال الرسل عدد واحد بعد الحادثه دي بحوالي 45 يوم لما وقف بطرس ويقول عايزين نعين مكان يهوذا ولقى برضه في عمل الرسل بيقول ايه وكان عده اسماء معا نحو 120 الدايره بتوسع وقويه جدا بولس يقول لنا ان اللي ظهر لهم المسيح بعد القيامة 500 وأكثر من 500 أخ أخ يعني زمال في المسيحية أخ يعني زميل أخ يعني تلميذ أكثر من 500 تلميذ ده اللي المسيح كان بيبنيه بيبني هرم قوي جدا وبيأسسه وبيمرن كل تلاميذه على الدعوة ف لما دخل السيد المسيح بالناس دي حتى اللوقة في عدد 19 بيقول ايه؟ لما قرب عند منحدر جبل الزيتون ابتدأ كل جمهور التلاميذ مش ال 12 لو كانوا ال 12 كان يبقوا ال 12 لانه دايما بيقولوا ال 12 لما تكون الحكايه مخصوصه بس لكن هنا بيقول كل جمهور التلاميذ احنا هنا بنتكلم على اي رقم من 120 ل 500 عارفين الكنيسه دي لما بتبقى مليانه على الاخر بيبقى فيها حوالي 400 لما تحط فيها 500 بتبقى كل الممرات مليانه وقوف ده العدد اللي احتمال كبير كان موجود في الفتره دي واللي هم بايعوا الملك الجديد وهو داخل اورشليم طبعا الناس دي كلها الرومان لما شايفين ناس عماله بتقلع هدومها وشجر والكلام ده كله الرومان ما لهمش دعوه لو كانت اللي بيلوحوا بيه ده طبعا سيوف كانوا دخلوا وقفلوا الحكايه لكن مين اللي ما فاتتش عليهم؟ رؤساء الكهنه فاهمين هم كويس قوي خلع الملابس دي ايه؟ فاهمين اشجار الفرح ده ايه؟ فقالوا له يا معلم انتهر تلاميذك تلاميذك الناس دي الجمهور ده كله كان جمهور التلاميذ والناس الثانيه اللي هي مستنيه المسيح يجي وكلهم فرحانين بدخوله بيبايعوا الملك يا معلم انتهر تلاميذك طبعا هو 
ابتدى الصدام مع كهنة العهد القديم ومثل الكرامين الأرضياء السيد لما قاله لهم كان بيحكم بأنه هيزيح الرئاسات القديمة ويسلم الكنيسة لتلاميذه للكرامين الجداد الصدام حصل معاهم وقالوا له بأي سلطان بتعمل كده وهو طبعا زاد وغطى حكاية ان هو دخل وطهر الهيكل وطرد الباعة وابتدى يعلم في الهيكل وهو بيقول بيتي بيت الصلاة يدعى طبعا قال عليهم الويلات وحكم على أورشليم بالخراب والهيكل بالدمار لأنهم رفضوا دعوته فنيجي النهاردة اللي هو يوم الاستعداد من مرحلة جديدة قلنا هو قال أبني كنيستي وأبواب الجحيم لن تقوى عليها هنا بقى هنبتدي النقطة الثانية اللي هو إزاحة آخر عدو أمام الكنيسة اللي هو الموت وعشان يزيحه لازم يربط الشيطان السيد المسيح في يوم الخميس أسس لنا سر الإفخارستية وجاب الخبز وبارك وقدس وقسم وقال خذوا كلوا هذا هو جسدي وفي خلال ساعات صغيرة رفع كاهن الله العلي ذبيحته ذبيحة العهد الجديد على الصليب على الصليب السيد المسيح كان صوته بيجاهد في انه ياخد نفسه على الصليب لما بيبقى متعلق هو طبعا في مسامير في رجليه فبقى عايز يريحها فبيرخي فبيشد فالرئتين بتوعه ما بيقدرش ان هو يتنفس لازم يزق على المسمار ويرفع نفسه شوية عشان ياخد نفس وبعدين يطرد النفس فلازم يرخي وكل نفس بياخده رحلة عذاب في الأواخر بيموت المصلوب من نزف الدم ومن الخنقة مش عارف ياخد نفسه فإن هو مش عارف ياخد نفسه ما بيقدرش يطلع حاجة الأناجيل تقول لنا حاجة صعبة قوي حصلت يقولوا صرخ يسوع بصوت عظيم وأسلم الروح جاب منين الصوت ده الناسوت ما فيهوش الصوت ده ما فيهوش العافية دي الأنبا شنو ده علينا يحرحه كان بيحكي عن اللحظة دي لحظة لما كان بيموت وجاله الشيطان ياخد روحه فهو قبض عليه أنا يخيل لي أن الصرخة العظيمة دي كانت صرخة اللاهوت اللي أفزعت الشيطان وربط الشيطان ومنها خرج ونزل فين للجحيم ربط الشيطان ونزل الجحيم يفتح الأبواب وفتح أبواب الجحيم جاب مين؟ وبشرهم زي ما بطرس قال بشر الأرواح الذين في السجون بشرهم اللي استقبلوا البشرة بالفرح عندك إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب وموسى وكل الأنبياء وكل الناس اللي هو الكتاب الكنيسة بتقول عليهم أسرى الرجاء فدول خرجوا معاه خرجهم من الجحيم وراحوا يفتح لهم الفردوس وفضلهم اللص اليمين على باب الفردوس بنشوف احنا ال- 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 الوقعة دي في ليلة العيد لما اخونا عاطف بيقف هنا قدام الستار وبيخبط على الابواب ويقول افتحوا ايتها الابواب الدهرية ليدخل ملك المجد والملاك من جوه بيسأل مين هو ملك المجد 
فهم بيقولوا له ايه؟ زي ما شرح لي ابونا صمويل دول قدسين العهد القديم اسرى الرجاء بيقولوا افتح لينا الرب القوي العزيز الجبار القاهر في الحروب هذا هو ملك المجد وبتتفتح الابواب والمسيح الاله يقيم نسوته من القبر وينزل ميخائيل ويزيح الصخره من على القبر ويقوم المس... و... 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 واحنا كلنا بنقول ايه؟ اخرستوس انستي لما بنشوف ملكه وقيامته المجيده. الله قادر على انه يدينا بركه هذا الصوم المقدس وبركه البصق المقدسه ونشوف دايما افراح القيامه كل سنه وانتم طيبين.